All right. Thanks everyone for jumping on a call. Hope everyone is energized enough. Uh, we are trying to extend the, uh, the daily call routine to have one more call to cover the Europe and Asia time zone. Uh, we're kind of looking for the person who's not uh, vegetable at 11 p.m. Pacific. Uh, I certainly am. So if there is someone who can take a lead on that, that would be great. So to cover today's agenda and mostly keep it uh, high level, there are a couple of uh, kind of good news that uh, we start to receive from the you know, various uh, um, communication efforts we started last week. I finally got a word from AWS that they finally found our account, which took them too much time, but uh, they are working on getting the credits in. Uh, we also got a word from uh, CEO of Kaggle that there was someone inquiring if we we're legit, uh, which means we could probably get some, something from Google uh, anytime soon. Um, I had a follow-up call with New York Times uh, journalist. Uh, the article is still happening, not sure when. And I have an interview with Wall Street Journal on Wednesday. So those are kind of the big ones that could potentially spread uh, our word even even better and hopefully we'll establish some relevant uh, connections with you know more powerful entities to help us in terms of organizations. Arthur I just would I just wanted to add to the media um, I'm trying to work some local NPR contacts here in Chicago as well. Nice and soon we're, we're gonna have a lot of different you know media opportunities and I won't be the best person to, you know, execute on all of them. So hopefully we establish the communications team that will be dedicated to that. And we can uh, loop in different members to uh, act as our representatives instead of just me going to, to the interviews. All right. Sounds great. So uh, for today's agenda and uh, discuss current blockers and how to make progress within individual tasks. I think we're, we're getting an amazing progress across different teams. Now it's a, a question of properly organizing that uh, information, make it super easy for people that are just jumping in to understand what's happening. So um, I have a call with uh, Maya on, uh, on the risks team to kind of lay, the, lay out the foundation for that. And the, the key things are just centralizing things into the task risk notebook so that people from Kaggle and in any other places can have a central place to understand the current progress on the task. The second one, improving knowledge organization in Trello. We're, we're getting there, we have tasks, they, they look random right now, but we, we're gonna get better with that. And the third one, setting up GitHub process. So currently Dan Sosa and the vaccines task, uh, these guys have been uh, doing an amazing job at, at that exactly, but I feel that other teams, uh, other teams are not catching up. So hopefully I can help bridge that gap between uh, Dan Sosa and other teams and help streamline that. So that's what I see from the, the main blockers. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm just gonna quickly throw out there that one of the things that we did last night is getting together a uh, domain expert communications guide so that we can really start streamlining that process. Um, any We've lost you. So, but we're going to try to get that moving. So I put that into the chat. Okay. Um, as, as quick as we can, we're going to, going to structure that a little bit more. Sounds great. This is Tina. Um, we had a little bit of discussion today on, on program management call uh, just about um, understanding whether we have four different submissions, one for each research topic or one um, total submission that could be used, you know, potentially for other research topics. Right now, with a two-week um, timing and two um, first submission, it, it looks like we're, we've got four different submissions. Yeah, it sounds like that, and I think that's the most efficient way to proceed for right now for the most immediate goals. But that may may change in two weeks from now. Yeah. Uh, hi, this is Manuel from Tash Geo. And I want to make a proposal about the improvement of GitHub workflow. There is uh, right now 
<coughs> we have just uh, two people in our team that have uh, not full powers on the repository. We are, for example, uh, having trouble to set up a documentation using Travis. And most of our work will be doing uh, night build using Travis, so it will be quite important for us. And I, I propose that we have for each team lead uh, one person that has administrative, uh, full administrative powers for each repository. So things like the wiki that the VT team has uh, or things like that uh, can be done more quickly. I understand that from the <coughs> core team like you or Daniel or uh, Small Caveman, uh, you want to keep uh, track of that, which is fine by me. But also we think that we should uh, allow all the teams to move more freely, allow more communication, but also more freedom of movement. Totally open. agree. Yeah, let's figure that out uh, after this call. All right, sounds good. Um, I don't think anyone's trying to hoard any permissions. It's we're just, you know, we don't may, might not know who else needs, uh, you know, to get assigned. So reach out to. I think Anton has admin permissions to assign that. We could maybe each of the team lead could communicate like one name in the team lead channel. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. There's right. um there's also been uh, 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 with regards to Git flow uh, practices. There's been some discussion on a couple of teams about uh, good practices versus um, data management versus code management. So what I'm sort of getting the sense of from different discussions that I've been part of is that um, Git, Git is recommended for code management, but data management should probably be relegated to the Kaggle platform. And um, that way, if we're doing uh, data sharing or intermediate data results sharing, it's kept there in a sort of deployment area whereas code is maintained and, and code and results are not interdependent in Git. So short, just hygiene, short hygiene mention for this um, all call. Uh, anytime a topic is of interest, just note the person who mentions it and follow up afterward. Um, I don't know if we have a lot of time for discussion for side points, but um, I think that's a good way to, as long as the point is taken, um, just write down who said it and uh, reach out and make sure you continue that conversation afterward. Sounds great. All right, so I think we're good to proceed to the individual team uh, reports and I'll just emphasize the, the structure uh, for, for the report. High level progress, quick summary, time to results, how soon you can show existing progress inter externally, and blockers, what do you need help with? Uh, we're gonna start with Maya, risk, risk factors test. Uh, hi, everybody. So basically, um, uh, the progress that we have so far, uh, it is primarily um, that we've been able uh, to make a small subtasks that will now take us to a final Kaggle notebook that is presentable. Um, it's divided into NLP tasks and quantitative research tasks. It's like very, very small tasks, easy to do get results and you can move from there. Uh, I've started to organize a, sort of a library of the resources that we have so far because we have so many helpful things such as um, LDA uh, notebook, such as uh, top uh, papers already structured for a specific uh, topic and such as uh, an amazing job <clears throat> that Brandon did on uh, uh, figures, uh, abstracts, titles, and everything in a paper. So um, I'm, I'm gathering all the resources in a, in a single document so that they are accessible. Um, we have like, basically, uh, I feel like we have two main blockers at the moment, and I've never been spoken about blockers before, <laughs> but here we are. Uh, first is uh, actually data. And uh, here I will try to help Daniel to find uh, people uh, to download sets as fast as possible and provide us with data because we basically work on the same data sets. Um, and the second one is actually accessibility of uh, resources for the people who are onboarding. It's, uh, it's a little bit challenging to understand what's going on, what has been done and what should be done. Like if you are not, if those guys who were involved in a process for a week or so, they feel comfortable. They have everything they want and they understand how it is structured and everything is good. But if the person is new, it is super confusing. Plus, uh, it's just very, very separated pieces of code and outputs and everything. 
and I don't see that it like kind of converts into some reasonable flow anywhere except my own head, which <laughs> feels confusing. Makes sense. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll try to work with that. Hopefully we can uh, create the structure for other teams to follow and find something repeatable. Sounds great. Um, the second team, Geotask, Daniel. Yes, hi all. So um, we are steady, steadily progressing to having um, the data on Kago. We are obtaining good data from various places. We're focusing mostly on US, Italy. Um, we have a few people working on South Korea. And, uh, Amazing. Yes, yeah, so uh, the ones that uh, we discussed with Maya already. Uh, so yes, hopefully I'll uh, um, communicate more impactful progress, more definitive progress uh, tomorrow or the day after. Uh, I have two things that I wanted to mention since we're starting to have medical professionals, maybe some researchers uh, involved in the process. Um, so first of all, I think um, in the context of this collaboration with, uh, with the team risk, we, it would be extremely useful to have uh, um, medical professionals or researchers uh, in uh, epidemiology or similar to help us design the analysis. Because uh, Daniel, have, yes. I, I am sorry, I just forgot to update on it. I have, a, um, I have an expert. His name is Ruslan Alenik. He is extremely helpful. And we are working now to figure out a few things. As soon as I have the results, I will contact you and share with you. Okay, that's great, uh, amazing. Um, a second thing that we, were, uh, we are starting to do in my team is using a bit of NLP to extract location data, for example, clinical trials. So, you know, getting all the clinical trials from the bunch of papers and uh, uh, understanding where they have been done. We want to make maybe some kind of dashboard so that people can just select a location and see the clinical trials that have been done there. This could give hints um, on uh, uh, local factors that could influence, uh, for example, gravity of infection, probability of death if, uh, you're hospitalized because of coronavirus. This could be, for example, air pollution or something like that. Um, and also there, I would like to have at some point support or communication with uh, medical professionals um, to see what would be interesting for them because this would be a tool mostly um, directed to medical professional, to researchers, in order to have them have an overview of, of what's going on in the world. Um, and yes, I think that's more or less that. We should also probably at some point um, discuss, uh, not really copyright, you know, but um, if researchers use our work in their research, how they should cite the organization and things like that. I think it is, and um, yeah, and there is actually a good discussion happening on Trello for that. There is this guy, Boris, uh, I'm not sure if he's in Slack actually, but he created a task about how to publish our uh, information mm -hmm. as a uh, globally uh, organized research paper. And he has some ideas how to do that. Obviously, we don't have yet anything to publish, but hopefully he can help us create a template. And that's yes, how we yeah, that'd be great. interject into all the citations engine and the whole thing. Yes, and I, I think you can get, for example, a DOI, a digital object identifier for the, um, the GitHub repository or things like that. Yeah, so if someone has a, some ideas it. on the things that we should be thinking about for this and the things that are taking time to receive, like the OI number or something, just jump into that Trello uh, card. Sounds good. Yes. And also, and last thing I wanted to mention is um, whatever, so this goes also in the other direction, right? Whatever data sources we use, we should be very careful to give credit where it's due and to always cite the source uh, of the data that we use. Yep, absolutely. Uh, any blockers? I think right now we are fine. 
um, and I'll let you know if uh, something comes up. Sounds good. Thanks. Next team uh, transmission, Christine. Hello. Um, yeah, so we're also making progress steadily. Um, so we uh, make some progress on search engine. Uze help us convert a lot of codes into usable, reusable modules. Um, and we also have an initial list of search queries set up. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna say like what my, I might need like at the same time. Like I probably need some help. I know that we onboarded a few medical students from last meeting. Uh, I think that'd be helpful to help me check the search results or modify search queries. Um, and then at the same time, we also made some progress on the, uh, the similarity ranking of the articles and got some preliminary results. Um, and then on the same at the same time, we are continue to sourcing uh, like help from the N N uh, NLP people. And actually we have, I, I just created a list of uh, what kind of data we might need. And it's, I think there's some more of like the meta information I think will be useful to get to extract for all the papers, not just for our tasks. And yeah, and also there, we just know that there's some work already done on extracting geolocations from the papers. So if um, people need that information, that's actually been done and uh, probably is useful for other teams as well. Um, yeah, that's our progress so far. So we're just trying to probably, uh, you know, try to speed this up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's the goal right, right now. Sounds just a comment for Christine and, and Maya really quick. Um, um, if you'd like to, after the meeting, uh, DM me if you have some very specific uh, something that the medical students could help with. Um, right now, they are okay. focused on risk and transmission. Um, and what they're doing right now is they are going through uh, curiosity, a, like the curiosity database to start with, and they are tagging based off of a taxonomy that um, Savannah had put together. Um, fo focusing on risk factors, comorbidity, and transmission. So um, it, reach out to me and we can talk specifics um, and see if they or others that, that I might have in the pipeline might be able to help. Awesome. Thank Sounds you. Sounds great. Uh, the next task, uh, vaccines, then so -so. Uh Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Um, so yesterday our team had a nice sync up and we uh, just discussed everything. We discussed workflow, GitHub, uh, data storage, as Shannon mentioned, we had that question about best practices for that. So we're kind of working on figuring that out, probably hosting the data in Kaggle and then um, keeping just code relegated to Git. But we're still just kind of figuring that out a little bit. We figured out best practices for kind of sharing results within the team so we can give feedback to each other quickly. Uh, currently, we've done some work on extracting which drugs would be considered as treatment, so used like in an off uh, repurposing kind of way. Uh, still need to make a little bit more progress on that. And we have a couple more NLP related tasks to just extracting those kinds of mentions uh, that are in the pipeline coming soon. Uh, today, we're going to do a lot of recruiting because our team is, is really small and we have concrete specific needs with regards to NLP and machine learning. So I'm going to just start like reaching out to people directly on the general chat and get more people involved. Uh, we're gonna start recruiting annotators for training data uh, for a couple of them, uh, machine learning tasks. And, and that's pretty much it. There's no real blockers at the moment. Sounds great. Sounds like great progress. Uh, again, just uh, let us know, uh, let admin team know what kind of uh, people you're looking for. So hopefully even whenever you're not available, we can help uh, uh, source and direct uh, these people towards your way. Awesome, sounds great, thanks. Sounds good. And I think it will be great to have a, a quick update on the integration of medical experts and just the process that is happening there. I assume either Steve, Natalie, um, or someone else can help with us with that. 
um, the, I'll start my video, oh, I'm sorry, um, this is Steve, unless somebody else wants to jump in here. Um, the, Go ahead. Uh, okay, so uh, when we put together the process flow, I just wanna take one step back really quickly. Um, we talked about input from subject matter experts in two aspects of our process. One is in the definition of how to find relevant documents uh, for particular tasks. And that, that particular request has two aspects to it. It's helping us uh, refine and define, define very detail-oriented tasks so that we can um, do a good job of using machine learning to find relevant documents. Um, and it's also creating keywords and other search criteria that would help in that process of pull, extracting the right material to help address or answer tasks. Uh, and then um, Savannah's done a lot of work on that. Um, and uh, I have done some, uh, taken what she's done and tried to standardize it. So I wanna uh, talk about that with the, uh, the team so that we can kind of get all that input into a standard format and hopefully uh, that'll allow us to be more efficient with the machine learning um, and build a, a process that can be replicated for other tasks. And then the second dimension is to evaluate the content once it comes out. We haven't really formalized how we're going to get that feedback, but that would be the second aspect of uh, getting subject matter experts. Basically, did we surface the right papers? Was the tool useful? Did it really answer the question? Um, on the first topic, it looks like a call's coming together for 1 p.m. Pacific. I know we've talked here a lot about domain experts um, and getting that input into your processes. If you're available, I would encourage you to join that call at 1 p.m. Pacific. I'll post something uh, and we'll kind of go through what's already been done, collect feedback from all the groups of what they're doing, and set a goal for ourselves to have a standard process by which uh, we can get capture this information. I think it'll be very helpful for the next subject matter expert that comes into the group because we'll already have a structure by which uh, they can provide uh, their input. So that's Sounds what's going great. on there. Any quick questions or we'll just leave it uh, and take it up again for those who can make it at 1 p.m. Pacific. Steve, just a suggestion. Um, can you um, at the same time just give like one, not now, but um, in this agenda, just a, a use case, um, uh, you know, um, that will help other people understand the relevance of this because it's critical, but I think it would really help illustrate. So like exactly what you said, just like. That's a good suggestion, sure. Sounds good. Um, all right, so the next step, current organizational challenges, resource needs. So I'll, I'll just make a, a quick intro that we're, we're seeing a tremendous uh, like personal growth happening right now with all of the people that um, you know, were uh, actual implementers, executors yesterday, uh, becoming managers today. And this pattern keeps happening every single day and you kind of have to elevate uh, one layer above, then next layer above, and kind of delegate your responsibilities and figure out who can help you with that. I think that's the biggest challenge that we're facing right now. And it, it's primarily a mental challenge because it's, it's just so hard to adapt to that because, you know, in a typical corporate environment, in organizations, these things take years, like five, 10 years to progress. Here it's happening every single day and the things that you're doing are affecting literally hundreds of people every single day. So I just want to encourage everyone that, you know, it's okay to feel confused or overwhelmed and, you know, sometimes question if you're being too aggressive or if, you know, if you should step away, but there is a balance. We kind of organically feel it and just don't be shy, be upfront, be radically transparent and honest about things that you uh, think are right and I feel that's that's the great way to, to make progress and it's it's working like yesterday there was this new person that joined us and she said uh, what, what did she say she said that she's yeah great job by the way I'm still completely mind blown that this is working and that's this is pretty much a, a motto this should be a swag t-shirt like no one can grasp like why it's working and how it's working but it's working So yeah, um, and I think it's it's a good point for uh, admin team to bring up any other organizational challenges that you think are are good to discuss here real quickly before we open up the Q and A for new people and 
any other people that have questions. Arthur, this is Tina. If I, I'm just looking for a link to the notebook that um, you had um, provided for everybody yesterday. I haven't been able to find that, so I'm not sure where I could find that. Okay, I just sent it uh, here in chat, and I'll send it uh, okay. to you too. Great, thank you so much. I want. I just. I'm trying to to um, create something that's an at a glance. Um, project wise or program wise and I want to make sure that it ties in with with this as well and if we can have something automated that'd be great maybe we can build off the notebook sounds great so um, can I, I'm gonna make a quick plug for um, just some slack hygiene you know use this if it makes sense to you um, and uh, following what Arthur said um, uh, don't feel bad about, you know, like um, this overwhelming of protocols, et cetera. Um, so uh, just for those who aren't familiar, there's an at channel and there's an at here um, tag that you can use. Use at here if it's an ongoing discussion um, that does not need to pull in somebody who doesn't come in for eight hours um, before they work. It also, um, uh, as team leads, consider dropping, um, you can change the preferences in, if you don't know this, um, in a channel uh, to remove um, um, highlighting if there's an at here or at channel. And I would strongly encourage that you consider doing this for every channel that distracts you from your main core workflow. Uh, the third thing about that is um, if you think that a team lead that is in another, has a different priority is relevant, please consider carefully if you can simply summarize and either direct message or message in their team channel um, the, the specific ask. Um, these kinds of little things are really going to go miles because it's figuratively like asking them to come out of their room, drop, drop their priorities to uh, reorient to whatever it is you're discussing in order to weigh in. So these little things will go a long way. Don't feel bad if it doesn't make sense, but for the handful of people that get what I'm saying, I think that's going to automatically change things. Um, I want to give a specific use case um, and also mention data viz. So we're like this mini side entity, and I think a lot of in a lot of places, you guys are already working on your data viz in house, and that's great. Um, the primary function of data viz right now is to um, be an outlet if you don't actually have uh, a means to generate your own data viz. But it's the secondary and most actually just as important is we we want to have some oversight and awareness of all the different data viz that's happening, so that we can have you know a comprehensive um, site on that. Now, if you're pushing something to data viz, that's exactly what I want you to do. Push it. Don't pull us into your conversations um, unless that's really going to be critical to do it that way. So reach out to data viz and tell us you have an ask. Our first step will be to make something functional from your data. So tell us what's critical in your data um, and give us a CSV and we'll get going. And then we'll start the conversation as soon as we have something dynamic. The next step is what are the features and the visions of that thing? So I'll stop right there. That's that's the key details that I need to update. Brandon and Mike Honey have been, um, I, I feel like they've been sharing their visualizations. They've been really outstanding so far. Um, so I would hope that we're including them in any um, visualization. Definitely, well. yeah, Mike Honey is um, how I've scaffolded in, into data viz in the first place. So, you know, like this is largely his effort. I'm, I'm like a PR spokesman for him. He's doing fantastic work. And of course, Brandon too. Great, thanks. Sounds great. So we have a couple of more uh, minutes to open up Q&A for any other uh, new people or just people that uh, need to figure out something from, from us organizationally. Um, please speak up. Oh, um, well, we do have a problem like uh, having new people join our task board on Trello. It seems like if they're already members on another board, then we cannot uh, add them to our board. There, I know there's a message that pops up that, that's like a warning message, but <clears throat> I've been able to click past that. Mm -hmm. I've been able to say like join anyway. It's it's more of a warning. Um, I don't when know I, if that's when the same. I type someone's name, it wouldn't uh, the the add tab or bottom. Yes, um, Tina, I I had the same problem at some point at the beginning, and you need some additional privileges to go past that warning. 
So okay. maybe Christine can, uh, you know, yeah, communicate with uh, one of you that can give her such privileges and. I'll take a look sure. at it. Um, as far as I know, I I only have admin privileges. Like I, as far as I know, there's only one set of of admin. Is somebody well steeped in Trello to be able to handle this? This is it seems like a broad problem. We've got it with uh, DataBiz as well, and I think it has to do with linking um, the individual Trello boards to the same team because um, it might be that task ties and our board are not actually linked to Corona Y team. That might be the key detail. Mm, no, they are, they they are. I think um, it's a, a main privilege because uh, the message you would say is that only I think five people that would the a main privilege that can add people to the board. Yeah, let, let's okay, I'll take a look at off. it. Yeah, any slide. Sounds good. Um, any other questions? All right, I think we're we're doing great. Thank you so much for jumping in today. I'll be uploading the recording shortly. And again, I highly encourage you to, uh, to create individual calls for um, your teams and just start generating these daily calls to sync. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.